It was the summer of 2016, and my friends and I were taking a road trip down to Miami for Ultra. Ultra is a widely popular music festival around the world that was hosted once a year with many popular celebrities. If you're a big music fan, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, my friends that I had gone with decided to get an Airbnb to stay in as that would be the cheaper option than a hotel and was well within our budget. I've heard a lot of bizarre and creepy experiences when renting Airbnbs, but at the time we really didn't think much of it. We'd be at the event for the weekend, which meant that we'd also be renting the Airbnb for the whole time. It wasn't a huge house or anything just the appropriate size for a group of friends. This had been a weekend we've all been looking forward to for about a year now, so we made the most of it. Fast forward to the day of the festival. We're all partying, having a good time, when I take notice of a man staring intently at my friend. This was common, as it's a large event with many people, so it was no surprise there were creeps. However, my friend didn't feel threatened or uncomfortable. She's had several encounters of people looking at her like this, and she sort of just let it go as it was normal to her. We all sort of dismiss it as some harmless druggie and continue on with our night. The venue was huge with a lot of people, I'd say about 5,000, and after a night of drinking and dancing, we all had went home. It's around 1 a.m. and we're all starting to go to bed so we could get up early the next day. However, I have always had trouble sleeping throughout my life. I've always had an innate fear of the night, ever since I was a child, and for whatever reason, I guess it stuck with me through adulthood. I wasn't so much afraid of what lied in the dark, but rather the dark itself. I always saw it as some silly fear but this night definitely confirmed my fears. At this point, it's about 2 a.m. and everyone was asleep but me. After constantly rolling around in bed, I finally got some shut-eye, when I awoke to my friend shaking me. In my groggy state, I ask her what she wanted when she says, Do you not hear that? Someone's walking around outside. Now, my bed is right beside the back door, and after rubbing my eyes, I finally heard it. Someone was definitely out there, and it sure as hell wasn't any of us. At first, I would have assumed it was the owner of the home just checking on things. However, why would he be doing that in the middle of the night without us knowing? I get up from my bed and peek outside the window, only to see no one there. I knew my mind definitely wasn't playing tricks on me, as I know what I heard. As I get out of bed to go see who it was, I then hear the scream of one of my other friends from another room. Upon rushing into her room, I opened the door and was greeted to a man who I could only recognize as the same man from the concert. The minute he saw me, he basically jumped outside the already open window and ran off into the night. Our two male friends had gone after him, but had given up after they couldn't find him. Police were involved, but there was nothing much they could do other than conducting a police report. We had contacted the actual owner of the house, who was thankfully very understanding and refunded our stay. Since we don't live in Miami, we had to end our trip short and head back home, which was an 8-hour drive. This was many years ago, and my friend has since gotten therapy because of this. She's obviously moved on from it now, but she still talks about it with people till this day. I still mourn over the fact that my friend could have been killed that night if she hadn't woken up. I still have no idea as to how that man from the show managed to find us. My only guess was that he simply followed us, but kept his distance while doing so. I've always wondered about what he might have done had I not gone into the room in time. We've never been back to Miami since, and we also don't rent Airbnbs anymore. This world is full of dangerous and evil people who actually want to cause harm to others. If you ever plan on renting Airbnbs, please do so carefully. Make sure all of the doors and windows are locked at night. 
you never know who might be lurking. When I was around 30, I went on a business trip at my new job for just making some new connections and exploring new markets. I worked for a law firm at the time, and while the trip wasn't required, it was recommended for experienced level individuals. The trip would basically be me going to business conventions and conferences with all expenses paid for by my job, of course. Instead of a hotel, my job had provided all employees with Airbnbs, which was new at the time. This would be my first time staying in an Airbnb, and seeing as I had it to myself, I thought it would be a chill experience. My first night there went decent, but something happened on my second night that still sends a chill down my spine. It was around 8pm, and it had been raining outside, and so I had put on a movie to occupy myself. I'm watching the movie while eating a snack, and about halfway in, I hear the house's phone ring. This was weird, as we were told nobody would be calling, so I could only assume it had to be bad news. I walk over to the phone and answer it, and say hello into the phone. On the other end of the line was the voice of a man I had never heard before say something along the lines of, Yo, is this Michael? For context, Michael is in fact my real name, and so I had said yes and asked who it was. However, the person on the other end disregarded my question and asked what I was doing. I tell him that I wasn't going to respond to that if he didn't answer my question first. He instantly hung up the phone, and I had gone back to finish my movie when the phone rang again. This time, I was really annoyed as it was getting late and I had to get up early the next day. I pick up and say, Listen man, what do you want? I have an office meeting in the morning and I don't have time for games. There was a long pause before he said something that made my skin crawl. I'm just waiting for you to open the door, Michael. I looked to my left towards the sliding glass door that led outside and standing there was someone dressed in all black peeking inside. I scream at the top of my lungs and threw the phone at the door while I went to hide in another room. Ten minutes felt like ten hours as I hid in the bathroom hoping he was gone. After gathering up the courage to come out, I finally did only to find him now gone. I also shut my curtains and called 911, along with my boss who had been responsible for booking the Airbnb. Police had arrived and after I gave them a description, they had actually managed to find this guy not too far away. My boss had apologized profusely for the inconvenience and I was then moved to an actual hotel for the rest of the trip. Nobody was hurt thankfully and I never saw that man again. So, I've owned an Airbnb for quite a few years now. It wasn't a big home, just enough where you can maybe have two or three people over. However, my house is located right near Miami Beach with a nice area, so it was common for people to take notice. Ever since the pandemic had started to die down, my house got booked several times as life began to get back to normal. I didn't mind it though, as I made decent money due to the location and condition. Normally, I'd receive several bookings wanting to use my house for parties and whatnot. Just a few weeks ago, however, I had gotten an older couple who just wanted it for a few nights together. It wasn't a bad thing, but rather surprising considering it was just two people. I'd like to mention that I rarely see or communicate with the people who use the house unless they needed something. Anyway, 
It had been day two of this day, and I was at my girlfriend's apartment having dinner when my phone goes off. I look at it and see that it's the couple texting me. I could only assume it was bad news, and I open the message to them telling me that there was a leak in the water heater. This was weird, as I make sure everything in the house is in pristine condition when booked. However, no running water was unacceptable, and I tell my girlfriend that I'd be back and that I was going to fix it. Upon arriving to the house, I immediately noticed that there were now two cars in the driveway. Figuring that they must have had people over, I dismiss it even though it wasn't really allowed. I go inside the house and the husband tells me that there's a water heater leak in the garage. I politely tell him that I'd get it fixed and that he had nothing to worry about. We head to the garage and he shows me where the leak was and points to the nut from where the water goes through. However, the so-called problem he was complaining about was something a person without a brain could easily fix. The bolts of the water heater had been loosened and was far from broken. As a matter of fact, I could now see one of my wrenches sitting on top of the heater, indicating that this was done on purpose. It was then when I started to get an uncomfortable feeling as the man just stood there staring at me. I take the wrench and tighten the screw, stopping the leaking water. Uh, well, it's fixed. Enjoy the rest of your stay. He then profusely tells me to wait and asks if I could help him with one last thing. He tells me that there was something wrong with the cable in the guest bedroom. Now the guest bedroom is upstairs and when I looked at it, I noticed that it was completely dark up there. He gestures me to go first, to which I tell him why. He then tells me that it was my house and that he didn't want to be rude. I hesitantly walk slowly up the stairs toward the dark hallway. As I'm about halfway up the stairs, I can very faintly see someone standing at the top of the stairs staring down at me. Even through the pitch darkness, I can see this person holding something with a shade of yellow. It only took me another few seconds to realize that it was a crowbar. I stop dead in my tracks and turn around and tell him that I had to go, but that I'd be back later. However, instead of persuading me to go upstairs, he simply stared toward me and said nothing as I left the house. At this point, I'm inside of my car on the phone with the police telling them the situation. I didn't go back to my house until the police gave me the update, which eventually of course they did. Upon arrival, they were shocked to find that nobody was there and no signs of any damage. The only things that were stolen was a flower vase my mom had given me and the TV. Needless to say, I stopped using that house as an Airbnb as I didn't want to take any chances. Miami police were never able to identify who these people were or where they were. While it was a sucky situation, three questions still remain unanswered. What were their intentions? Who was holding that crowbar? And what would have happened had I gone up the stairs? It gives me goosebumps till this day.